Hello friends, my name is Lee and I share videos about photography as an art and as a lifestyle. Really as well as anything else that, uh, that I can come up with. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I shared a video on five big changes that have happened in the photography industry in the past five years. But there are plenty of things that haven't changed. And in this video, I will talk about five things that have not changed in the last decade of photography. I have brought my Lumix S5 II out onto the trails along with its kit lens. I've taken some photos along the way. I will continue to take photos along the way and I will share some of those in this video. But first, let me take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video today, Lumix. Like I said, I'm using my Lumix S5 II today. I like this camera so much because it's easy to use, it's very capable, and it's priced reasonably. Not to mention the plethora of L-mount lenses available through the L-mount Alliance. If you want to know more about it, I will link to my S5 II kit in the description of this video, as well as our full review video of the S5 II. While we'll be discussing constants in photography in this video, I would be remiss not to point out where new gear does make a difference, so I'll touch on that throughout the video as well. Number one, the number one thing that has not changed in the last decade is the exposure triangle. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO sensitivity. And you know what else? Things like white balance or the concept of metering. Each of those things remain the same. If you understood it 10 years ago, you will understand it today. So investing your time into the fundamentals of photography will never be obsolete. I just mentioned metering, which is basically how the camera calculates exposure. If you are a new photographer or simply a photographer who doesn't want to spend a lot of time on the technicals as you're using your camera, newer cameras do make your work easier. I have my S5 II set to aperture priority and auto ISO, and I can trust it to take care of me. I can see my exposure in the electronic viewfinder and dial in some exposure compensation if needed. That kind of ease of use in newer cameras can absolutely prevent frustration in new photographers, and it's enjoyable even for me as a longtime photographer who is comfortable shooting completely manually. Another concept that has not changed, aesthetics. Things like composition, color theory. These are things that will never change. I do think that these topics can be overemphasized and sometimes overcomplicated by some teachers, but a basic understanding of them won't ever expire. It is certainly helpful to consider what you like in terms of aesthetics. And then knowing how to get the colors, for example, you want out of your camera is the next step. We'll come back to that in a moment. You've heard Raymond and I talk about timing, light, and location plenty of times on this channel. How choosing a great location and getting yourself to that location will always be more important than your camera. You can have the most expensive camera and the fastest lens, but if you, for example, sleep in past sunrise, you won't capture that beautiful sunrise image. I saw that the conditions this evening were going to be nice and kind of cloudy. Maybe some rain was in the forecast, so I expected that it would be a pretty sunset. So you can bet that I got out here. A new camera like the S5 II can absolutely provide me things like a broad dynamic range to help capture the dynamic sunset, but it can't if it's sitting on my shelf because I didn't get myself out here. That being said, we don't always have access to beautiful places, wonderful models, uh, the right timing. Sometimes we are where we are, when we are, and if it's full direct sunlight, that's what we have. So working on things like your creativity is going to be key in your photography journey and again is always going to be more important than just the camera that you're using. It will also enable you to enjoy your photography and make the best out of those not so ideal situations. Cameras from 5, 10 or even 15 years ago are still good. You don't have to have a brand new camera to take good photos. Just because there have been all of these advances in technology, it doesn't mean that you have to purchase a new camera to be able to take wonderful photos. We still admire the photos of Ansel Adams. Did he have the latest mirrorless camera? No. It's important to remember that. In fact, if you are using a camera from 10 years ago, let's say, you're actually at an advantage because you know how to use your camera. So when you're in these situations and you wanna act fast, when your camera kind of feels like an extension of your arm because you've been using it for so long and you really know how to get the most out of it, you're gonna get the shot. Of course, am I using a new camera right now? Yes, I am. But I have spent the time getting to know my S5 II so that I can use it without thinking. 
Whether you're using your trusty old camera or you've devoted time to learning a new one, you're freed up to think creatively, to really look at your surroundings and your subject. Or if you're in a situation where speed makes a difference, like wildlife or sports photography, when you don't have to think about how to make settings changes, you're far more likely to get the shot. As we get closer to sunset and as I continue to lose the light, let's wrap things up. My intention here is that you don't get bogged down by thinking about your gear and if you need something new. There is always something that you can work on in your photography, no matter the gear you have. It could be working on composition using your phone's camera. I hope this motivates you to get out there and shoot no matter what camera you are using. I want to thank Lumix again for sponsoring this outing and thank you for watching. Please enjoy the last of tonight's sunset and any photos I capture on my way back to the trailhead. I'll see you in my next video.